Brace height, what is it? How do you adjust it? What does it do? How does it affect your tune, your speed, your performance, and your forgiveness? All of that I'll cover in this video. If you're new here, my name is Jake Kaminsky. I'm a two-time Olympic silver medalist in the sport of archery. I'm working to make this channel a great resource to all facets of archery. Specifically, I've been talking about a lot of recurve stuff lately within this tuning series. I'm also doing a form series um, teaching people how to strength train for the sport of archery and a whole bunch of other stuff. Links to all of those series will be in the description below. Hit that subscribe button and notification bell to be notified when a new video is uploaded because it will be happening at least twice a week. And with that over, let's talk about brace height, what it does, and how to adjust it. You're watching the Jake Kaminsky YouTube channel. far into what brace height is and how to adjust it, I will always recommend that you must have a bow square. This is an L square. There is something that's called a T square. So this one's in the shape of an L. Uh, the T square, instead of it having the two connections down here below it, has the two connections on either side of the actual bow square. I'll put a link in the description below where you can grab a uh, cheap, affordable bow square. Um, I prefer this L square, especially when I'm tying on my knocking points because I can access the knocking points from this side without having to snake my serving in through the in between the two actual clips. So like I said, I just prefer the L square. Um, some of them have laser etched uh, markings like this Easton one does. Some of the other ones have actual uh, marks that are stamped into it. So no matter how scratched up, old, dinged up, painted, bent, whatever, you'll still have marks that are easily able to be read. So this side's got uh, inches, imperial, this side's got metric. So you'll see that there's a scale on this side that measures your brace height, and then there's also a scale on this side that measures your knocking point. <clears throat> I'll always recommend that somebody shoots the brace height within the manufacturer's recommended range specific to the actual limb itself, not to the riser, okay? It depends on the riser and each individual riser. And I preface it by saying you must go by what the limbs say, especially when you're going with something like an exotic type of limb, like a border, um, due to the way that the limbs recurve, they have a slightly different recommended brace height range than other limbs. And because the limbs are the object that is actually flexing and storing the energy and basically doing all the work, that is the thing that is gonna be most critical, especially for longevity performance. So how durable it's going to be, how long the limbs will last, whether or not they will fail on you in the future. Some of that stuff will really depend on the brace height that you are using. So I always recommend use the manufacturer's recommendation for the brace height itself, not the riser, with the exception of the Hoyt HP geometry risers. Like when the HPX came out, it was a, a different deflex amount. So deflex is, well... Recurves don't have deflex. Recurves have reflex. So if you measure and draw a straight line between where the limb pockets are, and then you measure from that line to the pivot point of the grip, how far forward that is of the limb pockets, that's called reflex. A compound like this has deflex. So that means the grip is actually behind where the limb pockets are. So compounds typically have deflex, recurves always have reflex. However, with the Hoyt HP geometry, like I said, the HPX, it has 700 thousandths of an inch less deflex. So 700 thousandths of an inch is just under three quarters of an inch. So if you're measuring your brace height from your string to your grip or your string to your plunger, you need to remove 700 thousandths off of that measurement. 700 thousandths of an inch is about 17 millimeters or 1.7 centimeters for you people that use metric uh, on that side of the pond. But over here in America, we use inches generally. Except when I switch to win and win, I use metric as well to measure my brace height just because it's easy. <laughs> so HP geometry risers need 700 thousandths of an inch less. That's the HPX, the Ion X, uh, go down the line. I, I forget all of the ones that run the HP geometry, but they all have to be 700 thousandths of an inch less. If you do not run them that much less, you're essentially running a brace height that's three quarters of an inch higher than you should be. So this is a 25 inch riser with long limbs 
And the brace height that I ran, if I remember correctly, was right around 22 and a half centimeters, which is about eight and three quarters inches. But nobody in their right mind would ever run about nine and a half to nine and three quarters inch brace height on this bow. But people that shot the HP Geometry Riser would shoot the standard brace height that they are always used to because they didn't understand that there was less deflex in the actual design of the handle. But they were shooting their limbs at almost an inch more brace height than they should be. Not ideal and definitely not recommended. Generally, your manufacturer will recommend about a three quarters of an inch range of brace height from the low end to the high end. That's about two centimeters of adjustment, which is a whole lot. So what does a different brace height, like a low brace height, do that a high brace height doesn't? Or what does a high brace height do that a low brace height doesn't? There's a, quite a few effects that brace height has on the actual bow itself. It's going to have a sound difference in feel, so some can feel a little quieter, some can feel a little louder, less vibration, more vibration, more punch, less punch. There is a uh, lot of different things, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Uh, the next thing that it would change would be your tune. So a lower brace height generally will make your arrows stiffer. A higher brace height will make your arrows weaker. What that does and why that is, it just simply has to do with when the arrow decouples from the string in its cycle. So everybody has seen arrows flexing down range, right? And how they bend due to the archer's paradox, especially with a recurve. Well, when you change when that arrow comes off the string up to three quarters of an inch difference, it changes how much that arrow or when the cycle of the arrow is happening, thus affecting the tune. So a lower brace height is stiffer, a higher brace height is weaker. Due to that effect, it also changes the speed. So with your brace height being lower, it's going to weaken your arrow. So to keep your arrow in the same tune, you can bump your bow weight up a little bit to make sure the arrow is still flying well. And then what that's doing is you're putting more weight behind the arrow and gaining more speed. And the opposite is also true. Raise the brace height, arrow goes weaker, you have to lower your bow weight to compensate therefore slowing the arrow down. And then within that, there's also the forgiveness. In theory, many people will say a higher brace height is more forgiving. The only reason that I can wrap my brain around that from an engineering mechanical standpoint is simply because the arrow is on the string for less time, less distance. Meaning, you know, if the arrow decoupled here versus here because of the change in brace height, the arrow is on the string for three quarters of an inch less when it is at a higher brace height. So that means there's less chance of an effect for you twisting and torquing the bow, dropping your arm, making a mistake, things like that, that could affect the flight of the arrow and therefore the forgiveness. That, like I said, is the only standpoint from an engineering standpoint or from a, like a real world standpoint that makes sense to me. Um, if you think that there's another reason, please don't hesitate to comment below because I'd like to learn as well. How do I set my brace height or how does it affect the feel of the vibration, the punch, things like that? I mentioned that earlier. So the way that I set my brace height and the way I recommend everybody set their brace height is to go to blank bail. All right. You have your bow that is rough tuned as I've talked about. It's really close. Your stabilizers are set up fairly similar to how you want them to be. Um, you know, you've got everything relatively close. Nothing is like super fine tuned because you want to set your brace height before you go into fine tuning. Again, because I said brace height affects your tune, right? So typically I will get my bow close. I'll go shoot some bear shafts, get my arrows acceptable tune wise, stabilizers, make sure my bow is holding well. And then I'll go to blank bail, set my brace height the way I'm about to tell you, and then go back to, uh, to uh, 30 meters, get my bear shaft set again, especially if I change my brace height a whole lot, and then do my walk back tuning, my fine tuning, and then I'm done with tuning. But anyway, so how do I set my brace height the way I prefer, and the way I recommend everybody to do it as well? Go to blank bail, take your brace height, and set it to the manufacturer's recommended low end so or high end doesn't matter just start at one end of the spectrum get to the very edge of it okay i will start on the low end just because i like to increase up from there instead of going down i don't know why but anyway i go and set it at, say like say if minimum was eight inches or eight and a quarter i set my brace height to eight and a quarter 
I shoot an arrow or two, I get to feel it, I get to hear it, whatever. Then I'll unstring my bow, and this is how you change brace height, by the way. You can unstring it like I did, or with a stringer. Stringer is probably safer, but I've done this for years. Um, anyway, so you unstring it, and then to change your brace height, you just add twists to increase or remove twists to decrease. People will say, well, what direction do I twist it? Just look at the string. You'll see which direction it's already twisted. I see that if I keep twisting counterclockwise, I will increase twists. So I'm at the low end of my brace height. I've shot an arrow or two. I then will add one, two, three twists, put my string back on, restring my bow. Look how I'm not looking at my limb tip when I string my bow. That's how you lose an eye. And then I'll shoot another couple arrows. Maybe one is all I really need. Unstring the bow, add three twists, shoot another arrow. Unstring the bow, add three twists, shoot another arrow. And you do that until you get to the maximum brace height that's recommended. And throughout that brace height range, you will feel and hear very distinct differences in your bow. Especially at the lower brace heights, it will probably be a bit louder than you may like. And then at the high end, you're going to have a much more calm, less aggressive setup at the higher brace height. But I typically find that there are two very distinct spots within that brace height range that are distinct compared to any other setup. But they're different, all right? There's a low one and a high one. The low one feels like it's got a lot of punch. Like it really, when I let go of the string, the string just really comes out of my hand quick and slams into the limbs and then the bow jumps really hard. But then after the, the arrow is gone, there's a lot more limb flutter. So the limbs are doing this a bit more. It's a little bit, a little bit louder. It's a bit more harsh in the vibration, but that's after the arrow is gone, okay? So at the low brace height, it has a very distinct punchy feel, a very aggressive delivery of the arrow, and then more residual vibration after the shot. Whereas the higher brace height setting has a much softer delivery of the arrow, or at least a softer uh, decoupling of the arrow from the string than compared to the lower brace height, but the bow is much happier. There's less limb flutter, it's much quieter, uh, less vibration and, and, and all of those things. But again, that's after the arrow is gone. To me, I want to have the best performing setup when the arrow is being delivered, when the arrow is coming out of the bow, not after the arrow is gone. So what I do is I always pick that lower brace height. So I get a couple benefits from that lower brace height. I get more speed and um, I do have that advantage in my head and in, in my feeling that the arrow is being delivered nice and crisp. And another advantage to having an, a bow that is crisp on the delivery yet harsh on the finish is you can use that harshness to your advantage. How? How is after you make a shot, sometimes, you know, even at my level, I'd make a shot and I would feel like, you know, eh, that's, that's okay. I don't see really an issue. You know, it's just like every other shot, but my bow goes bang instead of doink, right? There's a big difference in the way the bow sounds sometimes when you let go of the arrow. And you can use that as a reference to how that shot went. So sometimes, you know, if you're like, what did I do wrong? I don't know, felt fine shot a seven instead of my normal 10, I, I don't know, but the bow definitely didn't sound good. So at least I know that I did something wrong. So I have a bit of an extra outside tell that says, hey, that shot wasn't nearly as good as it could have been, or there was something lacking. So I, pr again, prefer that lower brace height range. It gets me a little bit of speed because it's lower. I can have a higher bow weight, gain that speed back. I believe it's punchier, so it's delivering the arrow more crisp. I don't mind the residual vibration because it can tell me a bit more about the shot, and that's ultimately what I end up preferring. So again, make sure you set your brace height, if you're gonna do it this way, set your, find your optimal brace height and set it before you go do your walk back tuning and your fine tuning and all of that stuff. Because I find that Brace height can affect your tune quite a lot, especially when you're tuning it the way to the level that I was tuning it. Um, I would never adjust my brace height after I fine tuned because it changes too much in my opinion. Not only, you know, you can go fine tune your brace height at distance 
and twist your string up and down as you're shooting ends and see if your groups are getting tighter or bigger and then make decisions there. But I find that if I have the bow that is set up optimally working how exactly how I want it, how I want it to deliver the arrow, and then all I do is change my knock position or my rest height independent of my plunger tension, then I can have two options to fine tune as opposed to just changing my brace height and hoping for the best. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you get notified every time a new video is uploaded. For seminar and book info, head to jkaminski.com or click on the link below. And uh, yeah, I appreciate you guys watching. If you would, please share this video. It really helped get the word back out that I am back out there. Thanks again. Take care.